right, we are back. I'm Chris Garlock with the American Go e-Journal. With me, of course, once again, Michael Redman, Nine Don Professional. Good morning, Michael. Morning, Chris. All right. Uh, listen, before we get started, uh, as always, I want to thank all of our AGA members. If you'd like to support this content as well, please consider joining the American Go Association at usgo.org. Thank you very, very much. All right, Michael, so this is our first official uh, full AlphaGo Zero game. Uh, last week we did a little uh, analysis of the, uh, the, the Open. identical openings. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I guess that means we'll be jumping in uh, to a certain point. Um, but what's the, uh, what's the takeaway? Uh, what are we going to be looking at in this first uh, Zero game? Well, uh, Master is going to be playing true to its style. So it's going to be um, it's going to be playing the big samaris and stuff like we were seeing in the opening video, and it's going to continue um, to sort of control the game. And I'm going to be seeing a lot of moves that remind me of the Master series. So it's going to be very reminiscent of the Master that we saw beat uh, uh, human players in 60 games um, in the beginning of 2017. Mm -hmm. And and Zero is very territory on. We're going to see how it deals with Amoyo. So this is going to be a great game. It's going to be um, well played by Master. It's, it's, Master had a good try there to, to trying to beat Zero. Um, and it played a pretty good game up to a certain point. And we're going to see um, how, how Zero handles Moyo sometimes. So it's going to be oh, a very good uh, first video. It, it happens to be the first game in the set, but it also is a very good uh, game to start talking about these two players playing each other. Well, I'm sure everybody out there is excited as I am to, uh, to see this. So without further ado, let's yeah. get to it. Okay, so it's the same opening. Um, where people could just people would just go watch our yeah. previous video. <laughs> the orientation of the the first move here is a bit strange. You might find um, I, I decided just to leave it um, yeah. as as it comes. So so they're they're allowing the black move to be all sorts of places on the board. It doesn't really make any difference. Uh, any go player will probably agree that. Um, that D sixteen is the same as um, Q four or D four or whatever. A star point is a star point, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and so this is um, the same opening that I talked about. And it's zero, basically it's zero grabbing the territory. And, and Master is playing um, its big Shimari and a very natural looking opening. And this move again, yeah. um, I think I can say again that this is very much like uh, what a human player would play. Mm -hmm. And so I'm I'm sort of surprised to see zero resemble humans so so much. Like it's it's um, it's more surprising than like it does have um, some new ideas like that uh, early invasion at the three three point mm -hmm. in the upper left mm -hmm. corner is quite alien to human and it's something that AlphaGo does that is going to be difficult. It is even now um, like the the Kote version was doing that too, um, mm -hmm. and so human players were trying to to um, experiment with that. And actually, I have played it in, um, well, at this point, only one tor tournament game, but I have been playing it in some of my games. Um, and for the most, it's not really working for human players. Mm. And so it's, it's Can, a very difficult move for us to understand and, and use. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Could you, could you just say very quickly why you think it's not working? Is it because it's so hard to understand? Well, um, it just goes against the grain, you might say. It goes. It, it is. It's a move. It, um, the human knowledge that we have at this point says that it's not good to dive into the three-three point so early, mm -hmm. uh, because it allows black to control so much of the outside part of the board. Sure. And so it, um, it's like it's one of the moves that um, you tell beginners not to do when they're when you're teaching a, a right. OQ. A, Double digit Q player, maybe you'll um, have to teach that player not to jump into the three three points so early. Um, and so but AlphaGo does easy. it. But AlphaGo does it. So now we can't <laughs> say that maybe, but um, it's sort of a very basic part of our understanding of the game that it's not good yeah. to, to dive into the. And so we don't really know how to make it work. And, and the examples that um, AlphaGo is showing us are not quite convincing enough at this point. So. It's, okay. it's, it's still very difficult for human players to make it work. And it's not without with lack of trying. Like some players are actually playing these um, invasions in very important tournament games. But I don't think they're really making it work. Um, and now we're uh, now the uh, shoulder hit and white plays away. Mm -hmm. 
So this is a kind of a very interesting part of the game where master, you might say master is sort of, um, I know it's an AI, it doesn't uh, have emotions or uh, feelings like that, but you might say it's expecting white to be playing some immediate answer to this move. Mm. Uh, and so if master was a human, master would be a bit surprised to see white playing away like this. And so there's a question here, can white, can black find a way to punish this move? Like for instance, mm. Um, this kind of thing would be an attempt. Um, if we assume that it's bad for white to be playing away uh, when black plays the shoulder hit, then mm -hmm. um, it would be natural to say what happens if black plays here. And I'm expecting something like this. And now I'm going to go into a little variation here uh, where white plays this attachment. Oh, and yeah. This attachment is, um, it's one way that white can continue here in the corner. So we're going to be seeing this in a number of the games in this series. So it's, we could say it's the, the favorite move in this lower left corner um, when white attacks the black uh, corner enclosure. Mm -hmm. And it's a move that actually did not really happen in human games. So it's very unusual, um, but it's, it's turning out to be very successful. Again, um, I'm sort of disappointed by the lack of variations because um, I would think of maybe playing here or maybe playing here. So there's two moves that I would consider. Mm -hmm. And it turns out that Master plays this way every time. Um, in wow. various positions, in various board positions, this move, this position will come up every time Master plays on this side. This also seems to be feasible. So let's look at this one first. And so I'm sort of um, on version ground here. I don't really know what's going to happen, but this is what I think might happen. Um, I think mm. White, White, White's only move here is to play the Hane, I think. This is the yeah, only yeah. feasible move. And so this might happen. White saves the one stone. White's plan here is to sacrifice those two white stones on the left. So something like this would be according to White's game plan. And um, we can see if this happens, um, and I sort of simplified it a little bit. I, um, this is what White wants to happen. So um, I would assume that Black would be trying to, to stop that somehow. Uh, so uh, this is the simple version of what might happen, in which case White is getting a base on the lower side and black stones on the right are, are bad. They're, they're, they've become a liability. And so this is actually good for white. Like white has sacrificed something on the left, but white is taking control of the flow of the stones now because black has to handle those stones on the right. And also black's, black's territory on the left alone is not going to be good enough for black. Like if white controls the rest of the board, um, then just having this, um, it, it's not going to expand into the center when black has to deal with a weak group. And and it's, right. it's actually a, a, a bit over concentrated, right? The, the it's, white nice, the... it's not really, but it's it's not going to span very much. Like white still has okay. potential. White still has potential to to play forcing moves from the center, for instance. Like if white plays something like this, then yeah. black's going to have a problem here. Um, so the fact that white's lower side group, white's group on the lower side, has become strong, uh, will make the the future fighting. Um, on the right side, as well as towards Black's left side, Moyo, all of the fighting is going to become more difficult for Black. So I, this is an example of what I think White might be planning to do. In an actual game, I think I would see Black um, maybe uh, trying something a bit more aggressive, but, um, you know, I just can't really come up with, and at this point, like, Black might be trying something stronger, but it could be dangerous for Black. So mm -hmm. I would have been interested to see how Master tried to refute this, but um, it turns out that Master plays this way every time. And so we have this little uh, Joseki that uh, Master and Zero go through, and this is um, obviously a brand new thing. And White is connected here. Um, I could add a few moves, like, like if Black plays here, White's gonna play here, and it's gonna be a, a low connection, but right. Black, also, Black also has a weakness here with the Hane here. So, um, like if black connects here, although black has forced white to a low position, black also has a very weak shape. The connection there is not very good. So it's, it's playable for white. And of course, if white plays a honey in the corner, white's going to have a, a life there. So um, white has potential to live in the corner. So let me just ask, because when I, when I looked at this, when you sent me the file for review, I just... It, it just looks... I had to, you know, I worked out that it's, it is connected. It, it just looks so low. Well, that this, um, this is an area that was a black corner, like it was I a see. black territory. I see. Um, and white still does have some potential 
in the upper part of the, the left side, right, to, mm. to reduce that. So um, if we look at the starting position, where black is trying to attack white here, like this position, where black has built a wall on the right, then white is satisfied to scoop out the corner and, and, and live. Gotcha. Okay, point. that makes sense. So this is something, um, that, that variation, I would, let's just uh, show it on the board once more, is something that we're going to be seeing a lot of, like up to this point or up to this point. And after this, sometimes black will actually play this way to, to close to push black to push white down. And it is a very low shape for white, but it's mm. alive. So this is typical of the way zero likes to play. It likes to just make these little territories and then it's gonna dive into the black moyo. Mm -hmm. So it, it really reminds me of Chotskun. This game especially, it's gonna remind me of Chotskun more. So I'm gonna be talking about that again. Okay. And so what so black plays away again. Um, so both players have played away. Actually, this is where the game, um, where we're going to have to see a lot of variation after this. This is just one of the moves that Master can play. Like it can, it some in one game, it, I think it jumped into the three three point, and some games it played further uh, to the lower part of the right side. But this this seems to be a natural move, and also White plays a pincer. Now the pincer at B, it seems okay. Like um, there's various points where White could play a pincer. It could be closer to the Sona day. But when black plays a stone a day, I mean, um, it, it seems that the right side is bigger than the upper side. With that Josiki in the upper left, the upper side seems to be relatively small in value. So it makes sense that white would be playing something on the right side. Um, mm -hmm. I might play a, a closer pincer if I was white. Um, but white plays here. And in a way, it seems that with these two moves, let's just add the mark the two stones. Um, I wonder if I can mark it both ways. Yeah, just let's mark the two stones just for this video. Um, these two stones seem to be sort of um, coming on both sides of Black's uh, shoulder hit. Uh, so this Black stone. So White is playing on both sides of that, sort of trying to reduce the value of that move maybe. Uh, I get the feeling that that might be part of White's sort of game plan here. And Black plays the double card. So this is a very natural um natural sequence here like i think human players would uh probably be playing something like this too mm -hmm. and at this point AlphaGo never jumps into the three three point like uh a decade or so ago jumping into the three three point would seem to be the natural move let's just make a right. variation um but uh even if white test does something like this um i think in recent years players have started to think that this is better for white usually and jumping into the 3-3 point has become a bit rare in professional games. It's, it's something mm -hmm. that, it's just still pretty even. I would call it pretty even, but there's a lot of players who will, will um, human players who have stopped doing this with black. And so this again, it sort of agrees with, um, it's the most popular move for humans also. And so this, uh, it's actually like a, it's a, replica of the most popular human joseki here almost and and this is also is the um the shape it's it's the shape that white wants to continue with and in this case black just simply gives up that upper side stone and locally this is good for white locally this is a six, six, that black stone has become mochikomi so white has a nice territory there it's a good local result for white Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. But the way Master is playing, Master is black in this game, obviously. The way Master is playing makes sense uh, because in uh, in a more general meaning, the upper side is not so big. The upper side is not um, as big as, um, I, as I was saying, the upper side is not as big as the right side. And also, um, since black is trying to make a moyo starting, um, spreading out from the left side of the board, um, it, it seems to make sense that Black is giving up the upper side and giving that to White. And, and, and I just because you were just talking about how this is this this is a, a, a Joseki, uh, just sort of reminding ourselves that uh, Master trained. Uh, I, am I right here? Did Master train partially on human games? Was well, like the the, was, was version, the first version that beat a top pro. Um, that was pretty much well. It did start with human data. And it was sort of, um, and that version of AlphaGo was very much playing human moves. It was mm. um, trying to find the move that a human would play in that position most of the time. Mm -hmm. 
And Master, I believe, was just a, a very advanced um, version, starting with the same program. So it's right. like um, the Lee Said All version going through several, uh, a, a great number of in reincarnations in which it mm -hmm. reassesses the data that it has built in its previous version. And, and it builds a new set of values by reassessing the games that it played against itself. And going but through that you... process over and over um, created a completely different player. Like it, it found different moves that were more successful. And every time they uh, made a new version, you might say, and there, I, I'm, there were many uh, versions in between the Lee Sedol version and the master version. Like they were, I think at first they were saying it was taking them about three months or something to um, get a new version, but um, that process is getting faster and faster. And, and so they had several versions in between the two that didn't come to uh, the light of day. They didn't, they didn't publish any games from them. But um, every time AlphaGo would be um, changing its set of values, um, adjusting it to um, by di digesting the games and played against itself. Well, so two things. I mean, the zero apparently uh, was stronger than the uh, than the Lisa Dole version. I think in three days. I could be wrong in that, but I thought that's what I read. Uh, certainly, it was very very quick. Um, mm -hmm. But then the second thing was that. Uh, you know, in those earlier versions, even with all of the other things, there was still some some human games in the DNA, if you will. I, I'm just flashing on that in this, Zero has come up with the same Joseki, even though it has no human games in it. It's really is, astounding. It's, it's astounding, yeah. yes. Yeah. That, that, that's that's uh, what I was trying to get to. Sorry, I got there the long yeah. way, but that's, that's, um, what, I was, that's yeah. what I was trying to get to. Um, it's just... It's just it, it seems to me fruitful uh, to to think about uh, mm -hmm. and, and 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 to realize. But anyway, so where do we go from here? Yeah, well, not to say I doubt these people. It's, it's sort of hard to believe that. It will be so, so <laughs> I know, right? Um, so just to continue with the game, um, now Master plays this double honey, and again, this is an example of Master likes to go, uh, have very nice uh, to sort of solve problems before they happen. So this is typical of Master. Like in some of the uh, credit version um, games, you would see stuff like this happening. Mm -hmm. And in this game position, this would be bad for Black. Uh, because when Black extends, and, and um, in some of the games, we're seeing this kind of fight start, mm -hmm. where White cuts Black and is threatening to attack Black on the left and the right. And those three Black stones on the right are really in trouble in this kind of game because White's so strong on the right side. So. It really makes sense for Black to be playing uh, this double honey right now and allowing White to take the one stone. And so this exchange starting with Black A, um, it's given White a little bit extra territory, but it's strengthened Black's wall on the outside. And now we can see there's no cutting point. So Black has a very stronger, a stronger wall. So this makes sense. Like it's an example of why um, the, the, the moves that Master plays always tend to make sense to human Top, top pros or just any human pros. And that's why it's so easy for us to sort of integrate that, the moves that Master shows us into professional play. It's much easier mm -hmm. to understand. And so it's, an, it's a move that makes sense and it, it was well-timed, it was perfectly timed. The moment White got that strong position on the upper side, Black doesn't really have very much to lose on the upper side. So it's, it's a good time for Black to be giving that little gift, a local gift to White in order to get some extra um, strength on the upside. And also another um, thing about Master is that it does it doesn't really care about local lo uh, losses. Like it, it it's mm -hmm. willing to give local prof profit to the opponent um, in order to make the it's sort of you might say it's game plan, um, it's game plan work. So it, it's uh, accumulating influence on the upside. And again, Black is building on the left side Moyo here. And again, this makes sense because um, although Black has a very nice Moyo there. It's not territory yet, so Black needs to keep adding moves to it to uh, consolidate that territory because that's that's Black's big um, asset in this game. It's, it's the one area that Black has potential to make territory. So it would be a disaster for it to completely disappear, um, and it makes sense for Black to be building on it and reinforcing it, you might say. Mm -hmm. And of course, directly, this is an attack on White's is threatening to attack white on the lower side. So white has to do something about that. And black plays here. Now this is a move I don't like. 
Um, it, I'm going to say it's a bad move. Yeah. Um, but it's also very typical of Master, as I was saying just now, it's typical of Master to be willing to take local losses. And um, even in the Master series, when it was playing humans, we were seeing moves like this that were bad locally. Um, but they didn't really have a big effect on the overall position. The, mm -hmm. So the loss is pretty minor, and Master doesn't doesn't really seem to care about that kind of loss. So it's it's a move yeah. that a human player doesn't like, but Master it doesn't really um, make a big deal about that kind of. Loss. You you wouldn't play that as a pro, right? Well, I, I'm just going to show you um, what Black did was Black played here once, and Corling was a good move for White, and then Black did this. So this is this Hane is what Black wants to do. Uh, but so I'm saying that Black should just play the honey first. Ah, uh, okay, and yes, yes, yes. White's probably going to play the same. It's, it's probably going to be a very similar variation. This is what mm -hmm. I would expect. In mm -hmm. which case, uh, this is very similar to the game variation. Right. Only uh, Black is, um, has not played. In effect, Black has not played the B and C exchange. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so this is uh, this is the game variation where Black has played that exchange first. And this exchange has no ex very little value for black, whereas it's um, helping whites around the lower right corner. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would say this is a lot better for, for black because black does have, for instance, um, black could be uh, jumping in here at some later part of the game or mm -hmm. playing an attachment. Uh, black has a lot more of options um, to invade white in the lower right corner. And so that mm -hmm. makes a big difference. That could potentially make a big difference in the in the future of the game. <laughs> but it's something that um, Master doesn't really worry about. It's something that Master doesn't care about. Um, yeah, no, this, ne this next move, this next black move. OK, um, so black extends. And so, yeah, uh, in effect, it's an exchange of A for B. So black plays the honey here. Um, so black can force this. And then the Kosumi. Yeah, this is a move I wanted to ask you about. Yeah, go ahead. I I really like it, but I wouldn't play it in a million years. Well, it's a position where um, it's time for Black to do something to um, try to finish this territory on the left. I agree. Because it's, it's not territory yet. And so... Um, I can think of six when, other places I would play. Uh, yeah, and it's really difficult for Black to choose a good point. Uh, but when we look at the overall position, uh, it's pretty obvious that White has a lot of territory. Uh, <laughs> even, I can, <laughs> even I can count it. <laughs> it's countable. And White, it's White's count getting close to 60 points here. Yes. Um, and I'm not even counting the right side, which is not White's territory yet, but um, White's getting close to 60 points. That's a and lot of territory. What, what, what is your, it's, it's early. It's still early, and it's about 50, 52 moves. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, like, if we're talking about a black territory on the left side that is surrounded with black zones on the fourth line, for instance, that would not be enough. Uh, like, if black plays something like, uh, let's uh, this put a move in there. Something like this. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, yeah. yeah. Uh, this is a very normal move. Uh, it would be a good way to surround the side, and it would take most of the potential away from white in the lower left corner. Right. Um, but then uh, we could see white be doing something from the center, probably. And that's enough? Um, and if black surrounds the left side, that's going to approach 60. And so black's going to have about 60 points. To, then, then you see, uh, if, if we do that, and something like this, uh, and then uh, something like this, uh, I'm just, uh, I'm not really being very serious about the moves here, but if we have something like that happen, then something like this happen. It's just not enough. Black is going to be, gonna, has, has lost the potential in the center. So right. if Black is really attached to the side here, then it means that Black is going to lose potential in the center. Um, and when White plays another move like this on the right side, then now White's going to have a lot more than 60 points. So this is a bit, um, it's probably not good enough for Black. Like, I, I could probably get it. Um, I would have to be a bit more careful with these moves here, which is, I was I was just sort of guessing 
with these moves here. Yeah, yeah, no, Probably but it's not. a basic. This, yeah, the, it, it answers it answers my my question. Yeah. So, so it, the it uh, could so probably be a close game too. But uh, I I think the verdict is that Black to think that this kind of move is not good enough. Okay. But then on the other hand, if Black gets really crazy and does something like this, then we're going to see White dive right in and, and it's going to be a big fight. Yeah. It, well, right. a strong fighter would maybe think that he could kill White, but it would be a big fight anyway. And I think this is a kind of thing that Zero would be pretty good at to invade. And we can see there's all these cutting points in Black's position. There's, there's, there's White can push through here to cut or White can cut here. And sure. so there's, there's some potential weaknesses here. So this move here is actually, um, it's sort of dealing with the weakness at A, the cut at mm -hmm. A. It's mm -hmm. making it less important. And um, it's, it's trying to spread out. It's making it more difficult for white to erase from the center. So um, in the game, we're going to see white uh, dive in and take away the side territory, actually. But even so, it's feasible for black because that means black's going to be able to surround the center. And so white plays here. So this is just a move that uh, Zero loves to play. Um, <laughs> I was I was showing it to you in a completely different context before. You were, you were. Um, usually, a human player would um, a human player would want to be um, playing from the three three point maybe. Um, but uh, Alpha AlphaGo Zero likes to play from the four four point in this position. And when Black plays here and. Uh, White's going to cut later. Uh, when White cuts at the 3-3 three, three point, it, it ends up being the same same shape, actually. So it's really interesting that Zero just loves to start from the start point in this position. And then White dives in on the second line. And um, this is a point where I actually, I didn't um, make any variations because um, it's extremely complicated and I... I um, like I could, I could go um, through several variations and very long variations, and which would end in semi eyes and stuff. I didn't want to do that in this game, so I, I left you, it. You, you realize that there are, are thousands of viewers out there going, "Yes, yes, please, yes." But there's also, you know, so it's uh, okay. It's all right. Well, it's sort of beyond me. Like I, I um, just to put a okay. You've tempted me now. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, folks. We have to look at moves like uh, like this, for instance. This would be the strongest attack. Right, and right, then, right. And maybe we would have White doing something like this. Oh, I love it. I love and, it. You know, um, if it was me, I would die like a, a sad dog. But <laughs> yeah, uh, And it's going to be extremely complicated, and I don't really know. Yeah. That's uh, okay. That's all right. It's, this is one kind of thing, or or we could have Black doing stuff like it's, this, it's, which would be a different thing. Actually, this would allow White to dodge away like this and, and move out uh, with something like this out into the center. So that would be a completely different fight. But these are uh, all so, playable. These are playable for White. I mean, White's not crazy here. Uh, well, this one would be a, a completely oh, no. it would be a confrontation, and so right. it would be a collapse for one side or the other. Okay. This is a more careful move. It's um, this is saying that the lower left corner is going to be Black's territory, mm. and it's it, at this point Black is already allowing White to have the potential to live on the side, um, but that's not going to be a big problem. It's it's not it, that's not going to decide the game as far as Master is concerned. So it's it, this is actually very uh, very typical of Master. It's a, a Master like move, I think. And White cuts once. So this is a. White is trying to create some potential to live in the corner. And so it's a pro. So um, it's asking Black, how, how are you going to answer this? Like, Black can answer from the corner, or Black from answer, can answer from the outside. Like, if Black plays here, it's going to be easy for White to live in the corner, which White will not immediately do. But White does, having that potential left behind is going to be big. So White's asking uh, how Black wants to play here. Uh, so obviously, Black plays. This is sort of an alpha go thing. Uh, but also... <laughs> <laughs> but also, uh, master. This is also a move that reminds me of the master series again, because this move is offering a gift to white, a local gift to white. Um, it's going to be losing territory when white plays here. Um, this this a locally, it's, black's trying to uh, sacrifice the stone in a. So this is what black does to to get the forcing move from the outside. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this is a point where the master. Um, Master's bias for um, 
forcing from outside to um, make the overall position work well for itself. Um, and Zero's love of territory. They're sort of working in unison. They're, they're working together to create nice. this creation that's happening. Like, it's so this, cooperative. This is, it's very cooperative. They're, they're sort of, in this way, they're opposite styles that are working well together. For instance, um, that's what I was talking about with this A. If I was white, I would be tempted to play A. So let's just make that first. This would yeah. be trying to stop black from doing what it wants. Right. And that would lead to a completely different fight. Um, mm. But uh, this is what I would want to do. But Zero just grabs the territory. It just loves to take the territory. And it thinks it's gaining here. So it doesn't care about what's happening on the outside. Um, and Master is very happy to give up a few stones. So it's, it's a difference in opinion here, basically, between the two, two AIs. It's and fascinating. So, it really yeah. is. It, you can, you can, even, even I could see that, that, that that was what was going on, you know, that, that uh, Master was saying, you know, going for the outside and, and Zero is saying, fine, take the outside. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's, it's looking at those three black stones on the outside is another weakness that it's going to attack later. <laughs> yeah. And so it's very like Totskun, actually. Totskun is sort of like that. He's, you, you try to kill his group, he's saying, I don't know, I don't know what you were trying to do, you know. <laughs> Okay, so white plays the knight's move. Um, if white can jump out to the fifth line, I think white's going to be able to manage to, to, to survive. So black right. it's natural for black to be covering from above. And this is a very painful move. Um, but it, it looks now it's going to be difficult for black to kill this white group. And just to give one example, is this peep here. Yeah, thanks uh, in for which doing case, that. Yeah, uh, black will allow white to connect. And... Um, at this point already, like, um, if white gets to break out into the center, it's the black group that's going to be weaker. So this mm -hmm. is fairly easy, it's fairly easy for white to, to make a life. Yeah, thanks for putting that variation in because I was I was looking at the at the original position with just a few stones, and I, I thought you know it feels lively, but I I, I could die. So it was, yeah, it was and like if the overall position changes a little bit, then it's mm. going to be danger. So it's something okay. that black is sort of looking at sideways, but black can't do anything about it right Not now. Not yet. Right. Not yet. So black plays away. And, and again, this is sort of true to um, just to uh, touch back on, on this move here, this, this exchange that I was saying is bad. Right. Um, I think uh, part of uh, Master's plan here, you might say, although I don't think AIs really have a game plan, but um, Whatever. Um, it, it doesn't really think that this marked exchange is so bad for Black because Black isn't really hoping to get into the corner anyway. Black is Black's sort of game plan, you might say, is right. to allow White to surround the lower right corner because Black is trying to um, get something on the outside. And so when this kind of thing happens, um, it doesn't matter. Like it, uh, that exchange has uh, has ceased to be a bad exchange. Now, now this exchange here um, is actually. You could say it's a good exchange for black. It's a, it's a lovely. I actually really like that sequence. I, I, you know, it's just a beautiful sequence. Um, well, again, you see that zero is just uh, very happy just to take the territory. Like um, it's playing a very good Aussie move here uh, when it connects, but mm -hmm. it didn't really didn't necessarily have to do that. Like if um, I, I would uh, be tempted to do something like to instance, jump out, right? Oh yeah, sure. And, why not? It, well, well, why not? Yeah. So that's that's another thing that is. Um, so this would be lead to a completely different fight and more complications. Um, but uh, Zero is just happy to keep it simple, because it's going to dive in very deeply later, and and that's another way to to handle this position. I I don't think it's. I wouldn't call it bad. Mm -hmm. And so Black Peeps here. There's some question about this peep, but in some cases it becomes a kikashi. So it, it was a good, maybe a good time. For black to test out white's response here, and then here. So now, now black is sort of building the moyo, so trying to expand the moyo. But um, actually, when we look at this shape on the upper side, uh, this shape here, with the white stones very solid here, aren't they? And black is has is sort of vulnerable. Um, mm -hmm. This sort of um, shows. Uh, zero's thinking because white's so strong here, white's going to be able to use that as a base to jump out into the center. And black's sort of split between the left side and the right side. 
So although black has great potential in the center, it's actually pretty difficult for black to figure out how to actually surround this thing because there's this hole in the center in the middle of the two black um, areas. Mm -hmm. The black has this area on the right side and this area sort of in the center of the board. And, and it looks like white's going to be coming out in the middle of those two. Mm -hmm. And so it, it is difficult for black to sort of uh, put that together and make it work. It's a little, uh, it's, so, a, it's, a, it's a little thin, right? It's a little thin. So although black has been sort of controlling the game and black has this lovely moyo, most players would think that the game is going well for black. Um, but uh, just looking at the way it turns out and setting the game a bit, I think that's it's still hanging in the balance. I think it's about even. Mm. Okay. But, you know, if I was playing a quick game and I wasn't really thinking about it very much, I would definitely be very happy with black. I would be thinking I was winning. Mm -hmm. Even though white has this immense amount of cash. Yeah, but black has this territory in the center. If black can uh, finish the territory in the center, it's going to be huge. Okay. Like, like even on my PC screen, I can almost fit a hand in it. And that, that's what people <laughs> say. Like, if you can fit your hand in the territory, it's, it's You're in enough. good shape. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on a real so, go board, you could probably fit two hands into the center area. All right. So, th so things are about to get I me. Mean, the timing is, is pretty key. I mean, white's got to do something pretty soon here. Uh, but it's not going to do it yet. Uh, like, this is uh, uh, zero again. Um, I was talking about how if the game changes, this right. position in the center changes, this group might be in danger. So here is white is adding a stone to the group. So uh, that's part of part of that is what black does here, bumping against white. Black sort of um, threatening white a little bit more, um, and now white just adds another stone. So white's playing very calmly still, um, just getting rid of the various. Now there's no white group that's in danger. Like this group I, I... is 100 percent alive, and we just see all this white territory, and white is saying that there's this cut at A and there's this cut at B. And it's going to do something drastic to the black moyo. See, see, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. When I looked at this, I looked at this game, and when white played that move, I mean that that move is just saying to black, "Go ahead, and make your moyo. I'm not worried about it." And and I would be very worried about that black moyo. It looks like you know it could get huge, like, as you were saying. It looks like it can get huge. Black has to be very careful because there is this weakness. That the cut at A could uh, be a very real problem here. And so black has to worry about that. And there's also, of course, the, the hane. I might as well uh, just add one more. There's a hane here. So that could be a problem sometimes. Um, right. So there's all this bad odds in that general area, which uh, black has to worry about. Um, so what black did, uh, let's see. Uh, this is a kind of a, it looks normal enough. Uh, yeah. But when white plays here, like, um, my first impulse would be to continue surrounding the center, but this would be uh, the case in which moves like this would become very, very troublesome because black cannot really allow right. white to take away the whole side there. That would be too much. Like that would take white close to 100 points, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's not an option. Black has to worry about that uh, bad idea there too. So black connects here. And we can see that black's moyo here White is sort of breaking through in the middle of Black's moyo, so it's it's very difficult for Black to get the whole thing, and that makes the, it a close game. It's it's not as if it's bad for Black yet, but it's, um, Black has to worry about the left side and the right side both at the same time. So Black's playing very solidly here, um, just to get rid of that bad odds on the left side of the board. And so at this point, Black doesn't really have to worry about that cut anymore. Black has played solidly enough. So with perfect timing, white jumps in here. Mm, mm, After mm. black plays A and B, now is the timing to play here. White is threatening to connect up at C, and C or D. And just to show you what I would be thinking of with black, I would be thinking of this move. And this cuts white off, but it's it's really, really bad. Oh, option. whoa, that is such a cool move. It uh, works, well, yeah. too. Well, well, thank you for saying that, but it does have very bad Aussie with moves like B and C for white. So I, I don't really know if it's going to work locally. Well, locally it works. I mean, in the whole game, it could cause problems for black later on. Um, but this would be the strongest local move. So again, I would say that white playing here now, before white shows what white's going to do in the center, was well-timed, I would say. Gorgeous. And black plays the good Aussie move.
this is also a, a very typical of master, I think. And so white has reduced black center territory a little bit, but of course black has a very thick shape now. And black master seems to be saying that if the game proceeds peacefully and black can surround this ter territory in the center and get something in the right side, maybe then black's going to win. So that's mm -hmm. what black master seems to be thinking. Okay. So white plays here. Now this move really, <laughs> uh, really wowed me. Like this move, um, it reminded me of Chotskun at his best, really. Yeah. Uh, because this is the kind of move that Chotskun likes to play. Um, it's actually um, attacking the black moyo. It's, it's not reducing the black moyo, it's attacking it. And um, but let's let's just let's just take a sec here. Let's just count the the uh, the, the the array of forces, right? There are there are two white stones in the middle, just like that that problem we've talked about before, you know, the, the white pearls and the black uh, uh, sea. <laughs> <I> mean, <yeah. laughs> well, um, of course, white has a strong position here. So okay, that's, that's true. one. It's got some, and it's also, got some friends. White has uh, this thing here, the okay. jump here. So there's some potential to connect up in that direction. And these black stones here, let's use a different marker to mark the black stones. These black stones here are a bit spaced out and weak. So, so there is some potential weakness there. Okay. But still, like in this position, I think I would have trouble finding this kind of move. Like th this is a very <laughs> adventurous move um, in a position where most white players would be feeling a bit insecure to, to jump this far into Black's Moyo, right? But white yes. actually has to do something like that. White actually has to be this adventurous. So this is a turning point in the game. And uh, AlphaGo Master played here. And I, I'm sort of tempted to call this the losing move, actually. Really? Um, it's a, you got it. it's, it's what a human would call bad, bad uh, fighting spirit, bad ki. Oh, bad ki. Uh, yeah. And okay. to, to, uh, to spell it out, this is the move that I would choose. Um, and this is um, finishing the center territory. This is giving black a, a territory in the center. Yeah. Yeah. And um, again, just saving the one stone is not going to be good enough for white. So white's going to try to attack black here. And I'm going to uh, assume something like this. Might. Black mm -hmm. is actually fairly well connected up in this, mm -hmm. although black looks thin. Black can probably connect up. And if we assume uh, some kind of variation like this, uh, white's going to connect up in the center, and black's going to finish the center. So black mm -hmm. gets the center territory. Most of the right side is gone. And I think this is going to be a win for black. Wow. Um, so I'm, I'm going to call this a win for black. Um, it's going to be a close Close, game. close, close yeah. though, right? Yeah, of course. Um, so I think that Black had to, to play this way to, to stake out the center territory because this was uh, uh, protecting, basically it's a, just a defensive move. It's protecting Black's group on the right side and it's going to get some territory on the right side. Um, let, me, let, me, yeah. let, me just, let me just ask you, I mean, that, that strikes me as an as unmaster-like move or am I wrong? I mean, your, so, your, your, your move looks more like a master move. Right, yeah. So it's, it's sort of out of character even, yeah. Yeah. And very defensive. It's, it's as if master thinks it's winning already. Oh, and so okay. maybe that's All right. the case, but um, I don't agree with it in this case. Huh. And of course, zero is very good at um, finishing game after this. It's, it's uh, very possible that master uh, didn't expect zero to be so successful in the following moves. So white starts with this. And this is a point where uh, white is looking at all sorts of stuff, bad odds in the center. Like if black cuts here, this is the natural move. Uh, but white will be able to push through and cut here and get some odds in the center. And for instance, if something like this happens, we can see that now white is sort of attacking black in the center. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the whole center will disappear. So that's not good. And so black uh, plays here, a very defensive move. So white scanned a little bit there. And white's going to continue to make little chiseling maneuvers to reduce. Um, this, this part is actually saving the, the marked stones on the outside by getting this stone here. White was aiming at cutting here, the final move, just to get an extra stone there to, to help save the stones on the outside. Uh, let me just jump in here. This is what I was talking about in our in our last commentary. Watching uh, this game in particular, but a lot of these that there's a lot of really fine reading going on at this point, right? With the, 
Yeah, yeah. From the human viewpoint, their their reading is very good. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, we're, we're talking just. I mean, the calculations have to be amazing. Oh yes, yes. Well, I think that's a strong point of AlphaGo. Yeah. And it gets better and better as the game progresses. Right. And so now White uh, plays here. Now this is uh, where <laughs> Zero starts to make some trouble. Uh, locally, White is threatening to extend at A, and I'm going to start right. a variation for that. And also, White is looking at the odds of a cut at B. Uh, having that said that, um, it's still very natural for Black to answer directly with something like this, but uh, playing this forcing move. Um, Black doesn't play this. Like White, White would probably play something like this and be looking at the cut at C. Mm. So, uh, so instead, Black jumps here, just ignores it. And white plays some forcing moves on the side. And then cuts here, yeah. So this is a point where actually black has just sort of ignored this move white played on the side. So I'm going to show you locally what white can do. Uh, white can extend here. And black will crawl. And white will take the corner. So white can actually scoop out the corner with this sequence. This is pretty big. Wow. Uh, but I, I didn't really uh, go into a detailed count of the game. It's pretty close. But it seems that um, by playing, uh, let's mark the moves. By playing this move here, Master seems to be saying that it thinks this is good enough for Black. It's going to mm -hmm. be a close game. Uh, and also, and, and we yeah. should just say, I mean, you know, what we've been seeing in the in our in our you know previous series. Was that master has been right? You know, master yeah, will play yeah, these kind of moves, and and, uh, and and you've you've talked before about this about how master will, will be, you know, ahead and sort of start giving away points. Uh, it looks to me like it, maybe it can't do that against zero. Right, and again, uh, it's not doing that, not at this point. And the fact that white didn't immediately do this is a sign that zero seems to agree. So zero started with this. And this is a truly troublesome move. White cuts here. Um, because Black would like to refute this somehow. Um, in the game, actually, Black returns to the corner. So Black's going to give a, away a lot of points in the center of the board. So Black's other uh, option would be to uh, play here mm -hmm. or to extend. Now, extending is a compromise because now White's going to get something in the center, uh, a small gain there. And then White can take the corner. So this is a little extra for zero. This would be a little bit better than doing it immediately. Mm. So that's OK for white. So the other choice is to, to clasp the stone, to take this stone, mm -hmm. after which white will cut yeah, for me. So and I now mean, black that's fine, right? Two choices. So does black um, connect here, or does black take the stone? That's the question. Um, if black connects here, white will just Force here and extend. So white's going to win the semi here. So that's a disaster. Wow, yeah. If black takes here, now black is threatening white on the left side. So white can't do it that way. But white's going to play this way now. And now white is threatening to win the semi on the left with a, aye, move, aye. with a move here. White could win the semi on the left with a move here. But when black plays here, Now white's going to get trouble. Um, and white, black wins the semi, uh, but white captures here. Right. OK, so this is good for white. So that shows how all this stuff is working for white in the actual game. Um, so when white pushes through here and cuts, um, there's actually no good way for black to refute this move. Wow. And so it's a big. So I, I, th locally, this would be too dangerous, and this would be just giving a few extra points for. Uh, let's just go into that variation once more, before White extends here and takes some profit in the corner. So this would be good for White too. Yeah. And so, like this is something that a human player could easily have overlooked. So I'm sort of interested to see if it came as a surprise for Master too. Hmm. Um, but but Master finishes off the corner, so now White has lost the opportunity to take any profit in the corner, but actually, uh, oh yeah, play some forcing moves again. No, that's just an AlphaGo thing. Um, but eventually, White's going to be playing that sequence on the right side anyway. Um, but White is getting a lot in the center now. Like uh, taking these two stones is pretty big, 
and white, uh, yeah. And white gets this extra forcing move here and then plays here. So now, um, uh, when I was thinking the whole area was going to be a black territory, I was thinking this is good for master, but this is getting chiseled down very gradually from all sides. Um, and so that goes back to, to my idea that uh, this move here, let's just get back to the move. To this, book, this move here was after all, um, this move was maybe mm -hmm. the losing move, but mm -hmm. you can see a lot of stuff was happening in, in the interim. So I, I can't really say it for sure, but um, like at this point, the game is starting to look very close and maybe good for white. Mm. And so white plays here. Um, and there's still some excitement in the game, like black plays here. This is cutting white off in the center, but actually mm -hmm. white can jump out here. And like black could actually capture these white stones by playing something like, like this, for instance. But this would be losing too much on the other side. Right. Um, so it's not worth it. So uh, white jump when white jumps here, and black plays the knight's move. White, white plays here. Black plays here. Um, it turns out that white can actually connect. Like if white plays here next, um, and black extends and white pushes through, there's no way for black to cut these stones off. Mm. If black that would just be suicide, right? Um, yeah. So it's not working. And so, uh, so instead of doing that immediately, white starts with this side. And at this point, I was looking at the game as still really close. Um, and I decided that uh, black's mistake was this move, uh, playing away. And black could play here, um, forcing white to play here at this point, to, to white to, forcing white to make the connection. I wanted to ask you about that because when I was looking at the game, I could not understand why Black wouldn't just play that. I mean, it just it just seemed really. I figured it just must not be big enough, and that's why Black played the move there. It's going to be forcing. And first of all, I want to make the comparison to show you why I think that's important. Because in the game, White jumped out here, and now Black tries to force. White gets this one attachment here. So this one attachment that White gets in makes a huge difference in the way mm. white can slide into the center territory. Um, and so when black plays this move first, white doesn't have the opportunity to play that attachment. And uh, black can uh, play away here. And this is a big move. This is a move that black wants to play. And now when white white is, uh, white is can't get into the center as much as white doesn't actually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I was looking at this and I was assuming that it would be a winning variation for black. Sure. And I actually, if you look at the SCF, I suppose we'll be posting the SCFs for, for this too, right? Um, yeah, folks folks should have it now, right? actually, yeah. Um, I went into this big variation. Why don't I just show you some of the moves? Like I went into this. Um, white surrounding the upper side here is actually a, a pretty big move, uh, this move here. So uh, the fact that white gets to that um, makes up for the extra profit that black has made in the center. And I, I tried to make a, a good end game sequence here um, with with this kind of sequence happening. And um, it seems a pretty natural end game. And we're running out of big moves. And I, I take it to the end of the game. Mm -hmm. And I think in the end, white won by half a point or one and a half points. Um, so it was a fourth of a stone. But in mm. Japanese rules, it would be one and a half points. So it turns out that, uh, as I see it, white's going to win anyway. And and this is the best variation I find for black. And that indicates that uh, white is winning already at this point. So so um, that's why I, I actually go all the way back uh, to, to, to this move, to say maybe this was the losing move. Um, but of course, it was, it was this move here that um, clinched the game for white, maybe. It was the, the fact that white could find this move which um, many Go players would would just be taking the corner territory, which would lead to a different end game. Um, and also, in a in a game with uh, time pressure, for instance, it, it's mm, quite possible mm -hmm, black mm -hmm. play this way and just collapse. So there's all this stuff that was very um, very complicated and very um, an, a demonstration of very uh, uh, good calculation, good reading um, in this whole sequence here. And it turns out that at this point, white is already win uh, winning. And so but we see this happening. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. It's a ton it's a I mean, it's a really tiny margin, though. It's a tiny margin. It's one and a half points in Japanese. Yeah. Language. Wow. Um, with my Yosei. Yeah. Like, um, 
Yeah, I think I think in this case, I'm pretty confident that um, it's just about correct. Yes. It's a relatively simple end game. It's it, fairly. It turns out the end yeah. games are a bit. This this end game was a bit more simple than most of the end games I'm doing with the Crete uh, version. That mm -hmm. that Crete loves Coes so much that it makes the end game much more complicated. <laughs> I think the human likes coast too, but the, the computer program, the AZ Kote likes coast. Yeah. Uh, so so uh, let's get into the game variation again. Uh, so in the game, black played, just played here, and white got something extra in the center. Here. And so at this point, uh, black's, black's center territory is already getting chiseled down. Like if black answers this, uh, like this, would white would be able to uh, squeeze again from this side. And it's, it's not... Um, it's not as big as it was in the other variation. Because white black's going to just be squeezing white. And so this is a much smaller center territory than it was wow. uh, when I was doing this variation. Mm -hmm. And so that's not good for, for black. Um, OK, getting back to the game. Uh, so black plays away again. Now, this move on the upper side is actually pretty big. It's a big move. It reduces it's white's huge. upper side. Territory. Yeah. So it, it actually, I. I I went into this variation a little bit on my own. It turns out this is probably the better move. Playing on the upper side mm -hmm. is probably the better move than trying to surround the center. But at this point, uh, we're just playing inside a winning variation for white. Like, zero already has the game. And it's just it's just choosing a way that it likes to play. <laughs> like, it's, it's just uh, like a cat and mouse thing now. It's just, it's just having fun. But again, white's showing its is strength in reading because uh, white is setting up a sequence here in the center, which is going to work. Um, like it would have been a lot of, lot, maybe it would have been simpler for white to uh, play something different here. Like white didn't really have to, white probably didn't have to play from the inside like this. Uh, when, when black played here, uh, white is playing a very um, adventurous move here by cutting here when white could just mm. simply move out into the center, couldn't he? So, with the, um, with the, with with the other Atari, right? With the other Atari, with this Atari, White could just simply yeah. move out the center. Yeah. Instead of doing that, White is playing a, a more complicated variation. <laughs> uh, and it's working also. This um, is actually pretty cool, yeah. White has all these cool threats on the right side. You can see yeah. that White group is is dead, but all of, all of the end game moves there are going to be forcing moves. Um, so when, when Black plays, for instance, something, at some point Black could play an Atari here, which could lead to a co, but mm. white has all these co threats on the right side, so that's not going to work. So in almost all of the cases here, that's not going to be an option for black. So we can sort of disregard the potential for a co here, and we black has to handle all this stuff happening in the center locally. And what's going to happen is, for instance, if black connects here, uh, white can cut once just to, to get rid of some bad odds there and, and play here. And it looks like so black has cool. Yeah. It's so cool. Looks like black has a snapback, but black doesn't because black's in trouble on the other side too. Um, with white can play an Atari at A to capture the two stones. So white can capture at A, or let's just add a few moves. If black answers on this side, white white can capture here, and again black cannot connect. So it's it's just a kind of a double or triple um, damismari shape. It's the uh, stuff of damismari nightmares. On nightmares, yeah. Michael. Nightmares. So black is dreaming about this game. And now, it's, now, now this is uh, where it gets really messy. And I'm going to stop uh, talking about the moves now. Uh, yeah. Because basically, Master is just trying to throw the game. It's just trying to, um, <laughs> it's trying to mess up um, sort of the way the Lee et al. version mess up just once against Lee et al. in the fourth yeah. game. Yeah. Um, it's, tr it's trying to do that, and Zero is not allowing that to happen. Like mm. every time Master does something really stupid, Zero finds a way to make it uh, not make very much difference. And then at some point, uh, Zero starts playing almost dummy points. It plays very small moves that it doesn't need to play uh, just to keep the score close. But it's, <laughs> uh, it, it's playing within a, a, a winning version. Like it, it, it ends up, in fact, this game ends up with uh, the smallest margin, it ends up with um, Zero winning by one fourth of a stone or I think it was one and a half points in general. But, but, you're, but you're saying that if you played it straight, of course, there's nothing like that. Well, like, um, I would go back to that variation I was suggesting for black. Let's see if I can find it. Oops, sorry. 
Um, let's see if I can find that variation somewhere around here. No, a bit earlier. Yes, this this variation that I was saying, um, as far as I could tell, it's um, it's a half point win for white or one and a half point win for white. Th this is uh, a point where the game was very close, and it's it's getting slightly um, a large to be a maybe a slightly larger margin at this part where white has reduced the center a little bit, but mm -hmm. it's still pretty close. Um, so it's at, at the point where black. Uh, where black plays this move, where black starts to play bad moves that are losing points and trying to make the margin bigger. So if we assume the same moves um, played by master and white taking advantage of every one, then white could probably win by more like four, four and a half or something like that. That's what, yeah, that's what I was thinking. So that's yeah. what you were saying. But um, yeah. zero yeah, handles yeah. that every time. It, it handles the problems locally and keeps the game pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> so it's pretty, so, I, yeah. I find it very irritating, but you know. That's, that's the way AlphaGo works sometimes. It's continuing the cooperative uh, situation, right? Mm -hmm. They were, and it's it's, it's not giving the game away. It's keeping within no, no. the winning version, right? And right. Um, it's really strange that uh, actually Master is doing this. Uh, well, I guess it's okay for Master. Um, it, it's really strange to see AlphaGo doing this anyway. I, I'm I'm sort of blaming it on the Monte Carlo algorithm, mm -hmm. uh, but I I don't know enough about computers to really um, to really have a, uh, an opinion about that. But right. I'm, I'm, I, I, the Monte Carlo, when it was first introduced to um, computer, uh, go playing computer programs, obviously they didn't have the neural networks at that point, but right. uh, it right. did cause the programs to do stuff like this, really um, very stupid moves that had no meaning when the right. computer found that it was losing the game. And so I'm sort of blaming all these bad end game moves to um, Monte Carlo. So it'll be interesting to see how Zero does now, because I believe they're saying that they're sort of um, phasing out Monte Carlo at this point, mm. saying they don't need it anymore. So, and I think Zero right. is, is not using the Monte Carlo algorithm anymore. Right. Well, it's a fascinating game, and I think you know it's a great choice for the first you know in this new sub series or parallel series or whatever we're calling it because. It really is kind of breathtaking, you know, to see, you know, this self-taught program coming up with Joseki's, uh, and then just, you know, we've been spending all this time with this master program, you know, which has just been, you know, coming up with these wins, and to see it bested by zero is really quite astounding, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's a, um, obviously a great achievement. Um, not only in the program itself, but the, I mean the games itself themselves, but also the fact that they started with no human data. It, um, as they say, it is something apparently very new in AI itself. So mm -hmm. it's, in different uh, fields, it's going to be uh, making a big difference, I'm sure. Oh, exciting stuff. Uh, terrific uh, analysis, Michael. Thank you. And uh, it's, it's, it's good because, uh, you know, just in case you're starting to get bored by those other games, you know, now you've got some, <laughs> new, to you've got some new toys to play with. <laughs> There's no chance I'm going to be bored, no. Yeah, good. <laughs> All right. Well, that'll wrap it up for this game. Uh, thank you so much, Michael. We appreciate it. And uh, again, big thanks to uh, all our AGA members in the American Go Association for making this series possible. Uh, if you would like to support this content as well, please consider joining the American Go Association. Just go to usgo.org. And thanks for watching, and we will see you all next time.